Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I thought I'd change things up a little bit and instead of showing you food, I thought I would talk about making food. So you know I love to create recipes, I love to make things from scratch, I love to just innovate in the kitchen, I just love to cook. I try things, I fail things, I success things. Um, and I'm probably not the most productive person in terms of content creation when it comes to recipes and vegan recipes. But nonetheless, I thought it'd be fun to share the process of creating recipes. I don't know, I think it could potentially interest some of you that are just curious or some of you that actually want to create vegan recipes, you don't really know where to start and it seems like a whole crazy thing to veganize some recipes. I would love to make so many recipes for you but because I live by myself and I eat everything I do, I just can't like mass produce things and I'm rather on a tight budget too and creating a lot of recipes costs a lot of money it's not something i can afford and i cannot afford wasting food either so yeah i'll give you the tips and the tools for you to try recipes with your own taste i'm going to talk about the kind of recipes that i veganize I think it's really important to enjoy plants the way they are and to create recipes with them just being innovative. Any plant can really be tasty, but there's also part of food that's about socializing, joy, memories, and I cannot say that I don't miss any recipes from before. Um, and I think it's really important to give that to people because it's often what holds people back from turning vegan or eat more plants is those small little things that they're afraid they're not gonna get. Hope you enjoy this video and let's get started. So in order to illustrate better this video, I will take the example of the cheesecake. I did that a few weeks ago. I think you guys liked it. So a few stories here and there. Um, but yeah, I was so happy about the result and the recipes on my blog. So all in all, the process goes through three big steps. First is the research and then is the creation and then is the validation process. So the first step from the research process starts with you actually. I like to know what kind of food you miss the most, what kind of recipes you would like. I usually make a question box on my story on Instagram or I take into consideration your messages, comment, or if I really don't have any messages and stuff, I just take something that I want to make and that I miss. And yeah, this is the starting point. This is the first step. Um, and once I've decided on what I want to make, I usually also ask for your opinion about the flavor, if there is different type of flavor that we can get from a recipe. So if it's the cheesecake, I ask you guys, what is your favorite cheesecake? Is it berry, Oreo, chocolate, or just like a, a normal cheesecake? The second step is when I kind of brainstorm how the recipe is going to be. So my very, very first step is I take a paper and I write down what I think the recipe should be or should have as ingredients. And this comes really with my intuition, but I guess it's also my experience in cooking. You know, you're like, oh, I wanna make a cookie. I probably need flour and chocolate and something that combines things. You're just like trying to figure things by yourself. So I'm writing down everything on a blank paper. I really avoid looking for anything else. It's just from what I, what I personally feel. Then the second step is I'm going to look for other recipes that are non-vegan recipes. I'm gonna search for like the best ones, so I'm just gonna do like a quick Google research. Or if I do have a family recipes that wasn't vegan and that was really good, I'll base myself off of this recipe. So I'll ask my sister, my mom, like all that. So first it's the family and if I really don't have any recipes, in the family or in my friends, um, I'll look through the internet to see what kind of ingredients, what kind of proportions, I write things down and I'll probably pick out of five recipes and see kind of what's, um, what's similar, what's different, just to have bigger look of things. Now an important step of this part is I want to identify the use or the property of animal products within those 
non-vegan recipes. So, you know, sometimes egg is there to bind things together. Sometimes egg is used as emulsifier. Sometimes creates some kind of like fluffiness if you're only using egg white. That's also coming, I think, with my own experience of cooking non-vegan food before or just keep seeing um, non-vegan food being made. I think that really helps me to know what's the property of each thing. So I'm really considering why would they use this? Is it to create taste? Is it texture wise? That kind of thing. So I know what kind of replacement I'll need. After this, usually I have like a lot of things written down on a paper and I'm just gonna go have a look at vegan recipes that have been made. I'm really trying not to be too inspired and too like, oh, I'm just gonna copy that recipe because it, it could be really easy to do that. Um, but the reason why I'm checking those recipes is mostly I'm going through the comments. I'm gonna check what people are saying about the recipes. Not to judge any recipe or anything, but if you do that, you kind of know what's best and what's working and what's not. Sometimes people have suggestions. Could be about the taste, like not enough lemon, it was too sweet. So I know about the proportions of things. That prevents me from trying so many different things and failing but i'm really really trying not to be too inspired by that which is why i'm doing like all the research before i will also do a little bit of research about specific ingredients if you use different flowers different oils sometimes they can react differently in the case of the cheesecake i didn't really know if it needed something to bind things together i was like hmm, maybe it should and maybe not but Anyways, I had that in the corner of my head and I was like, what should I use? Arrowroot starch or corn starch or tapioca starch? And for that, I just did a research on the properties of each thing and see how they react to heat in a cake or a savory thing or a sweet thing. And that's how I determined that I would use and try arrowroot instead of all the other starches that were available. And then the final step of the research process is writing a first draft of that recipe that I'm gonna make. And if I'm still hesitating in between things, I'll just write it down. Like I didn't know if I would actually use or uh, need arrowroot or not at all. This is something I'll, I need to try actually to see the difference. I also knew that instead of using cashews, I could use sunflower seeds because I already made a recipe using sunflower seeds instead of cashews and it worked well. This is a cheaper option. Some people actually allergic to cashews, so that could be a really good thing for them. So I wanted to try this too. And in terms of proportions, I usually make it with what I have in my head, which is really hard to explain, but yeah, just doing, you know, you get used to how much is what. And I always try not to go over 20% of sugar in desserts. Um, this recipe has 15% of sugar. It's fine, honestly, for dessert, but I usually have less than 10% for my healthier desserts. Okay, so now we're moving on to the creation part. Again, it's got three main steps, and not that I think about all those steps when I go through them, but it's just easier to tell you how I go by dividing everything. So the first step is I do a little bit of mathematics. So for the cheesecake, I wanted to try six different variation with the cashews versus the sunflower seeds. And then I want to see if arrowroot was actually really necessary or not. I also wanted to do a version without um, cashews or even sunflower seeds and see how it goes. So what I usually do is I make an ample amount of the base recipe and I divide it so I can try my different little variation on very small samples rather than doing six different big cheesecakes that I have to eat, which makes it actually pretty pretty more difficult i would say because i need to think of calculating what i need to split what i need to start up with i always set myself a limiting ingredient for me this case was the fact that i had made 400 grams of cream cheese so i'm just taking my calculator and dividing everything keep in mind that i need to start with the base ingredients that will be in all the recipes and then divide that and then you know you need to kind of think a little bit and draw an outline on a paper 
paper will really help you and that's what I do I usually do like a tree coming from the top to the bottom to help me figure things out so then I start making the recipe I'm following whatever I wrote on the paper but if I need to tweak little things and that's again about like feeling and tasting a little bit uh, if I feel like oh that's actually a lot of sugar like I'll just chant things and I'll keep track of the weights with the scale and I'll keep track if I can remember it to keep track with cups which takes a lot of time but <laughs> that's what I do and I keep track of everything on my paper and if everything is correct I'm just marking down okay I put that much once I've done all my versions and all my preparations I keep them in different bowls with different colors or things that would make them distinct from each other because sometimes you know there isn't much difference between things and you may confuse yourself so it's really important to say okay in the blue bowl I have the one that I made with the cashew and then in white bowl I, it's the one with the sunflower and then when I did the little cakes I've put some distinct things to remember what they were lemon zest or I made the base with Oreo instead and I also keep track drawing on a paper how they were laid out so we're finally into the final step which is the validation process and that's very very short <laughs> so once everything has been created the first step is of course a taste test if I'm really making like something that's pretty extraordinary like the cheesecake for example or something that I really want to have a lot of advice on I'll try to have friends or family um, for the cheesecake I had my sister uh, who loves cheesecakes and she's not vegan and my mom who loves to cook and she's not vegan which is really helpful when you have non-vegan people because they can be really honest, especially when they're family. Usually they don't like to know what is what and they like to try first. And as I said, I kept track of where it's what and this is very important. If you do like little samples for testing, <laughs> remember which is what because we got so confused with the cakes because they all looked like each other and we were like, wait that was number three or that was number two and then we didn't know and we had to finish all the cakes <laughs> to make sure we knew but yeah once we know once we know the things we draw a winner and this time for the cheesecake we all 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 decided on the number one and the number one was actually the one without sunflower or cashews which is none of the things that I had seen in vegan recipes on the internet we all felt like this was really the one that tasted the most most like a cheesecake so once we got a winner we still think is that perfect or does that need more lemon, less lemon, if it's too sweet, not too sweet, like if I could add a bit more something. And then comes the last part, which is the remake of the recipe in a much bigger version and the version that, will, that I will take in photo. And sometimes I need to go through it two times because making a bigger version of a very small sample that you have divided and divided and divided, sometimes isn't the same and the cooking isn't the same in a small thing rather than in big things so you don't really know if it's gonna work as well luckily this time I only had to do it once and then I write my blog post and I share it with you and then you can try it and then you are the ones that validate the recipe or not so yeah always keep sending me feedback on recipes because it's very important so I can get better and I can tweak things for the next time but this is how I create recipes vegan recipes or normal recipes veganized i hope that gave you some tips or just if you were curious of what i go through yeah i think that was very detailed so hopefully it can help you and if you have any request for anything that you want me to try and make vegan please leave a comment below and make sure you try that cheesecake because as you can see it's been a lot of work i also have made a few other on my blog you can check it out like kinder delis i also have some crepes and some moelle au chocolat in my ebook the mindful life which are super popular recipes so yeah check it out now is the time to cook to make vegan food to try things out um let me know how it goes 
and I wish you a lot of luck on your vegan food making. Send me photos of what you're doing and I will see you in my next video. Take care!